This morning we are going to talk about the uh, English White Terrier. As many have read in the English literature about terriers, they started with two types of terriers, being the Black and Tan Terrier, which is the ancestor to the modern day Fell Terriers, but also the White Terriers, which is the ancestor, they say, to the working white terriers of the salt of England. Um, there are however some controversial facts. The black and the black and tan terrier, which is the same, was always regarded uh, a working type of terrier, whereas the English white terrier was more of a show variety of the normal uh, flat-eared work in white terrier and we'll tell you why. Goedemorgen. Goedemorgen. And that was because there was some enthusiast at the late uh, 1800s, so the 19th century, and they uh, wanted to develop a breed of their own. There was quite a run on developing all kinds of breeds. That's also the reason that nowadays you see so many terrier varieties, which were sometimes born out of a regional characteristics of a working terrier, but also if you look nowadays in the working terrier world, you don't see 20 or 40 types of terriers re really being worked. Just two hands full at most of terriers that are best suited for the job and other terriers that are able to do it, but not the best at it. And. Uh, I think this was the same in the past. So what they did, they, there was the working terrier, which looked a lot like uh, the working white terrier. It looked a lot like the black and tan terrier, but white. It was more of a baying, softer type, so to say. So instead of being the black and tan terrier, it's more of a catch dog type style. This type had more of a yeah, a baying mix type of style. And the benefit would be that they would have uh, less injuries. And also the drawback would be that they were a lot more vocal. And also white, so easier to be spotted. But that being said, there are hard working white uh, working terriers. But with the English white terrier, they wanted to, to wanted to develop a prick-eared version of this uh, terrier for show purposes. And also they bred in, perhaps, uh, because this state is quite often, toy breeds such as the uh, Italian Greyhound to complete their purpose of a more elegant type of terrier. And on, although the English White Terrier was up to 20 pounds, so about uh, 9 kilograms, they were never found uh, at that weight, according to some uh, show terrier judges who also worked. And they say it was not a working terrier, but just a family and show companion, which was uh, the most fragile of all type of terriers. And that's not a good thing. Of course, in the past there were also other terriers which were being crossed with running type of dogs. For example, the Manchester Terrier, Kerry's Terrier and the running type of dog, Blood, but was still less fragile than the White Terrier. And also this uh, English White Terrier was being used in developing another show breed that many people find controversial that I name it the show breed, which is the English Bull Terrier, which was also known as uh, White Cavalier, because they use all white type of dogs 
And like the Bull Terrier, the English White Bull Terrier, which was prone to have uh, deafness, this came from the White Terrier. So they had a limited gene pool and that uh, carried over to the English Bull Terrier and they had to put additional amounts of Bull and Terrier blood, currently known as a shown dog, Steph, Steph Bull Terrier to uh, decrease that and also introduce the colored Bull Terriers that we know and love today. So I'm not saying that an English Bull Terrier could not work because that's not the case. Sometimes they work pretty good or even excellent. But there was quite some show type of dog in its ancestry. It was not developed as an all in all out pit dog. It was more of a dog to be sold and to be showed. And the benefit of a more vocal type of dog would be could serve as a guard dog as well, which the English White Terriers uh, brought to the breed and also more elegant, so, so they, what they say, type of look. Me personally, I really like the elegance of a working dog because most working dogs have little to less exaggeration in show breeds. Because if they have exaggerations, this often doesn't work as well as it should. So this gives you some insight about this uh, English White Terrier. And uh, in my opinion, as I stated in my introduction, it should not be confused with the Working White Terrier. Wacht hè. Hoi hoi. Relieved which is still being worked today as uh, its current versions being either Jack Russell or Parson uh, Russell Blood and also uh, those terriers are being worked less and less compared to uh, Petadil Terrier or Yacht Terrier which has uh, almost uh, completely eradicated it. But that doesn't mean that there are still very good white uh, working terriers left. There are, but they are not that easy to be found. Same with the border terriers. There are very good working border terriers, but also as a species they are almost completely eliminated by uh, black felt terriers, also known as petadil terriers, as a subdivision of the black fell. And of course, there are also other terriers that could work very well, but in the mainstream they will be cut out because they work sometimes very well, whereas other strains of terriers almost always work very well or otherwise have a high percentage of good workers they produce and are reliable to produce so. so as a terrier man, it would be far wiser to use a strain that consistently uh, produces the type of dog that you want instead of a strain that could produce it, but not in general. I hope you liked this uh, video. Sorry if I uh, burst some bubbles about the English White Terrier. And uh, I hope that the English White Terrier uh, in the working strains will still uh, keep on uh, yeah, showing good promises and I think there is a possibility to do so. But the funny thing is that it involves dogs that have uh, overlap with the English uh, white area which was a show dog and that being one the English white area was a show version uh, with some different type of ears. As from the working white terrier, so it has some overlap there, and also it was one of the ancestors of the English bull terrier. And the English bull terrier, combined with Russell blood, 
especially bison wrestle, but also sometimes jack wrestle, give uh, bull wrestles. And those type of dogs have a little bit of the benefits of both. So they are not that overly aggressive cat dog type of dogs that are able to uh, catch and hold, but also take a lot of damage. But they also uh, still have that uh, fighting tenacity of the bull terrier, of the miniature bull terriers are used there. And, uh, and also the intelligence of a more working white terrier. And I think this could be a good way forward. And some people say that they are better than petadils. And that is caused because they can be worked every day. They don't have to recuperate that often because they don't take that much of a damage. So they tell it's more of a self-conserving, which is explained as a more intelligent type of dog. In my opinion, this is not the case. A warrior can be still very intelligent, but just has a, uh, a job to do. But this is a thing that is happening. And many a worker or terrier man really likes this cross. So I think this could be the, the way forward for the working white terrier.